blessings all. A short video of an excerpt from uh, Joel Young for His Glory's Ministry here on YouTube. I highly recommend that you watch the whole video. It's extremely, what's the word? It's it, it opens up the Word of God to you more. So I'm just going to do about five, seven minutes on this and we'll take it from here. God bless you all. I love you. Here we go. Ow, ow. Now, what this woman would do, very interesting, women eagles, and she would drop it from on height and they would swoop along and catch it and bring it back. She would take it, go up a little higher, drop it from that height. They swoop along, catch it. Oh, oh she's gonna catch it. Ah, ow, ow. She'd go up a little higher. Next, yes, I heard that. Some women know this deal, know this deal already without even being an eagle. Go up a little higher, higher, higher. It's coming down 32 feet a second, it's coming down faster. There's wind drifts and cuts, and it, and it, hour after hour after hour. You better want this girl bad. Or we'll just go fly somewhere else. Plus, going to be saying anything down the block. Because the other girl you're going to go after is going to do the same drill. So you have no choice except to be single or learn to fly real good. <laughs> okay? And that's basically the way it is. You cannot drop it once. How does that apply to men? We dropped the ball once in the beginning with Adam. Made one mistake and killed an entire race of every generation throughout the earth. Amazing what one mistake could do. If you're perfect, you're good. If you're perfect. Perfect makes no mistakes. Now, I've heard this excuse in Christendom, well, we'll only be perfect when we're in heaven. Well, then go to heaven. Oh, I'm sorry, you are there. Ephesians 2, 6, you are seated with him in heavenly places. Then stay there. We did a teaching by location. Learn to be there and here at the same time, and you'll be fine. So you grow up into the head. Good, that part's done. Good. Ice is nice. You got that? Good. Now remember, it's not there, but it's there. That was a good answer. I heard you. Very well said. DNA, Genesis 28. Open it up, open your eyes, and remove all doubt. We'll start it. I'm sorry, yes, we're starting at 10. Okay, 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Beersheba is not Beersheba, it's Be'er, say Be'er Shava. And Haran should be Harana. Harana. So if you go up to somebody and say, how are you? Say, Harana. And you go, huh? That's your goal to start explaining. That's Genesis 28. Where have you been? Verse 10. Harana. So I like why the original names have sounds. Every sound has life. Everything will then change something in creation. So watch what you say and how you say it, and it's going to be resonant and change the atmosphere. Jake went out from Beersheba. What is Beersheba? Be'er Shava. It means the well of the oath. At this oath, anything that was done in the ancient world to make an oath, you did it seven times. Seven times. You would nod it seven times, you'd walk around it seven times, you would say it seven times, you would do it seven times. Seven was a complete, not a perfect, but a complete number. Seven, complete, Shava. What is the root of that term seven on the board? Do you see the first two letters of Shava? Is the four, one, two, three, four, you see the term here? And finger coming in, there you go. Sheen, Beit, and an Ayin. This is to take you to another level of Hebrew, very briefly, say Sheva or Shava here. Shava is seven, say Shuv, means to return. And then Ayin means to see. Because that's what you do with an eye. An eye is an ayin. So it's a word picture. What does seven mean at this level? It means to return to seeing or understanding. So when you've done something, when you return to understand, when you turn back to understanding, having done something seven times, that return brings you back to a place of understanding. So seven would get you there. How many sevens do you see in the Bible? A lot. When, were there more churches in Asia Minor than seven churches? Yes. But seven is to help get you back to understanding. So through those seven, 
The seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. It's not a quiz. Those seven churches have a prophetic significance, they have a personal application, they have a historical application, and you look at them through each lens a little differently, and they're all true. Do not just go one layer deep, please. Even your skin on your human body is five layers deep. The muscles along your spine go down five layers deep. Must mean something. Hmm. So, one, one, go to verse, go to verse two. I'm sorry, that should be 11. There you go. And he's going to leave. Good. Now we go back. 11. And he lighted upon the place and arrived, having arrived there all night, or tarried there all night, because the sun was set, took one of the stones of the place, put it under his head, and laid down in a place to sleep. Now in that place, there's a lot of meat there. Let's go through that. Say ma com, like a hair comb. Ma com. Ma com. Say it again. Ma com. Ma com means place. Ha ma com means the place. Ba ma com means in the place. Now this verse has this term ma com three times in the Hebrew. When you go through this verse and you count them, you have, you have ba ma com here. There's ma com. You have makom again, okay, hamakom, and then bamakom here. In a Hebrew, I have a five volume Hebrew, English, English, Hebrew dictionary at home. Five volumes. It cites this Genesis 28, 11, makom, which means place. You know how they translate that in that five volume Hebrew, Hebrew dictionary? Makom means the omnipresent God. Amen. A little different than just saying a place. Why? Because when he put his head in that place on a stone, the heavens were going to open up as he rested his head on the stone. Remember what a stone is? Evan is the father and the son. When you put your head and rest it, what's the term? Rest. Rest it on his, on the stone. Lay it down. Put your stuff down. It's not inactive. It's a place of rest. A menucha. King's are known and can only reign through rest. Amen. You ever make a hasty decision, a fretful decision, a harried decision, a stressed decision, even if it works out, you have suffered along the way because you're a bit out of control or a lot out of control. When you operate from a place of rest, even the Chinese in a twisted way will tell you revenge is best served up cold. Now I'm not talking about revenge at all, but I want to make a, a, a mindset that's been distorted. When you operate from rest, everything clears like a placid lake. Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes, which means they can see yours too. So if you're close enough to shoot them, they're close enough to shoot you. But you know, it's, you didn't talk about them shooting. How come in Numbers 33, 11, with the giants coming into the land, um, and when the spies were sent out, you have two very different reports from two different pairs of eyes. Two spies versus the 10, collectively speaking. And the two, the two that came with a good report never saw the giants, never mentioned the giants, did not give them any account or any value. Nothing to breathe even an issue. We could take the land. The land's good. So this, oh my God, they're humongous. How are you going to do this? My God, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. How did you know what they saw? Did you ask them, do we look like grasshoppers too? Why did they take a few of you, use you like toothpicks, and gobbled you up? What did they do to you? They didn't even know what they were thinking, but they actually were beat in their own mind. You could be beat in your own mind before you even step out the car. I'm going to stop it there. I want to keep this video under 10 minutes for your convenience. I'm going to pray for you, Father in Heaven. I thank you for each person listening. I ask that this word would be meat, Lord God, to them, that they would be able to grow into the fullness of Christ, Lord God, in the name of Yeshua. I thank you for your direction, for your protection, for the body of Christ, everyone listening, for all my subscribers. I love you very much. Shalom and shalom. Listen to it over again. This is part of an almost three-hour teaching, just an excerpt, a beautiful word from God. Shalom, shalom. I love you.